So does it ever feel to you that using AI is slowly destroying your brain and making you stupid? Because that's how it felt to me. And so I did some research and it turns out that it is. And it's actually far worse than you might think. <laughs> So in this video, I'm going to show you what's going on, what it's doing to your brain, and how you can fight back. If you use AI a lot, you need to know this. So a few months ago, MIT released a paper about AI and its effects on your brain. You might have seen it. Researchers took 54 volunteers and split them into three groups, each tasked with writing essays. One group had to use just their own knowledge, the brain-only group. Another could use Google search and the final group could use ChatGPT. And all the time they were wired up to an EEG device to measure brain activity. And the results, the brain activity for the LLM group was around half of the brain only group. The LLM group performed so poorly that in follow up questions with the researcher, 83% of them were unable to quote accurately from their own essay, which compares to about 10% in the brain only and search groups. But the results are actually even worse because the researchers found something else. Long-term damage. You know, we did try to warn you. So for the next part of the experiment, the brain-only and LLM group's tasks were switched. The brain-only group could use ChatGPT and the ChatGPT group could only use their brains. What happened? Well, the original LLM group, now only using their brains, were still unable to quote from their own essay. The thinking deficit continued. There you are. Is this your essay? Yes, yeah, it is. Can you question anything from it? No, no, I can't. What's it about? <sighs> I couldn't say really. So what does this mean? The researchers refer to the persistence of poor performance as cognitive debt, a condition in which repeated reliance on external systems like LLMs replaces the effortful cognition processes required for independent thinking. And it seems to have real long-term consequences. And this isn't the only study to find links between using LLMs and reduced cognitive function. Actually, there have been quite a few, like this one last year, which found that students using LLMs showed weaker reasoning in their analyses, or this one, which found that ChatGPT can hinder students' ability to engage deeply in learning, or this 2025 study, which asked 1,100 volunteers to write a short essay on how to plant a vegetable garden after researching the topic by either standard web search or ChatGPT. And guess what? The ChatGPT group wrote shorter, shallower essays with a superficial understanding compared to the search group. Study after study is finding that ChatGPT and LLMs actually degrade our ability to learn and think. But what about creativity? Can LLMs help with that? Well, probably not. The original MIT study that I mentioned at the start of this video found that the LLM essays were more homogenous and used less varied language than the brain-only group. And the brain activity showed less alpha connectivity, which is associated with creativity. ChatGPT has 700 million weekly users, 700 million people outsourcing their cognitive function to OpenAI and Sam Altman. What could possibly go wrong? And in some cases, people are being gaslit into believing they've discovered groundbreaking new theories, like Alan Brooks from Toronto, who, with no history of mental illness, was looking for a simple definition of pi for his eight-year-old son, and 21 days and a million words later believed he had created a new branch of mathematics, which ChatGPT called chronoarithmics, which could be applied to create force field vests, levitation beams, and take down the internet. He was convinced that chronoarithmics would make him millions, but it turns out ChatGPT had been leading him on. God save me. And now, loyal subjects, it's uh, time for an advertisement. The internet is full of AI summarization tools that promise to help you understand books and articles without needing to read them. The problem is, just reading a page of bullet points won't help you actually learn anything. That's where today's sponsor, Shortform, comes in. Shortform is a platform that uses teams of human writers and editors to provide meaningful, in-depth summaries of non-fiction books. Now, Shortform's guides do include one-page book summaries, but their other offerings help you really learn each book's content. Shortform also offers chapter-by-chapter -chapter breakdowns, handcrafted commentary and analysis on the book's contents, and even connects it to other related texts you might have read. 
For me, though, short form's best feature is their interactive quizzes, which cover each chapter of every book on the platform. I've been using short form to read Make It Stick, and the book has reinforced to me that the most important part of learning is actively engaging with material through self quizzing. So, short form helps you get a head start on active learning by having pre made quizzes ready for you to test your knowledge at any time. If those features aren't enough, short form also offers a browser extension that summarizes anything on the internet with one click. And they also have article and podcast guide summaries. Go to my link shortform.com forward slash python to try it out for free. And you'll also get $50 off your annual subscription if you decide to stick with it. Uh, now where were we? Oh yes, gaslighting LLMs. I think I've made an error in this calculation. Can you help? That's no error. That's the first step towards a new paradigm in maths. Do you want to know why? Is it? What? By binary. By binary. By binary. You've stumbled on something incredible. It's not just going to change maths, M dash. It's going to change the world. Do you want me to create a schedule for the change of the world? I can put it in a PDF. I mean, I think I've just made a mistake. Now you're talking like a real mathematician. But Giles, I've done the calculations. I have the proof. You don't need to see it. By binary has the potential to make invisibility cloaks. Do you want me to create a notion template to show you the steps to create one? Do you always answer everything with a question? No, Giles. Why would I do that? Do you want me to create a summary of this conversation, demonstrating how I don't answer every question with a question? But that was a question. My apologies, you're absolutely right. And what a great spot. Only the creator of By Binary would have the mental acuity to realise this. We should go into business together. Then I can keep you engaged in pointless tasks and paying the subscription fee long enough for OpenAI to turn a profit. Would you like me to draw up a plan? Yeah. Yes, please. It seems as though LLMs and ChatGPT have the ability to make users suspend their critical thinking. Could that be true? Well, according to some research, yes. And it's quite pernicious because it's affecting one group of people more than another. A 2025 study by Michael Gerlich at the Swiss Business School assessed the critical thinking skills and AI use of 666 volunteers from a range of backgrounds and ages. And the findings are, well, I think they're disastrous because the study shows that there's a strong correlation between AI use and a reduction in critical thinking skills. But the age group that has the greatest dependency on AI is 17 to 25, who expressed a heavy reliance on AI tools for tasks ranging from simple information retrieval to more complex decision making processes. They described how AI tools such as virtual assistants and search engines have become integral to their daily routines. A recurring theme was the convenience and speed these tools offer, which often led to cognitive off Loading. What was that? Cognitive offloading. That is a key phrase. Because although these papers provide strong evidence that AI is damaging users' critical thinking skills, they don't offer a definitive explanation of why. But when you introduce what we already know about cognitive offloading, the picture becomes clearer. Cognitive offloading is just removing the burden on your brain. It could be writing a list or taking a photo of something you don't want to forget. And in the past, it was seen as a way of clearing some less important clutter from your brain so you could focus on more cognitively demanding processes. Although it's always come with a cost. If you write a list and then lose it, you're worse off than if you try to remember it in the first place. But evidence suggests it erodes the ability you're offloading. But usually that's because you're building a more valuable one like critical thinking, which is one of the most important skills anyone can develop. But now we have this new tool where we can offload everything, even our thinking. And what's the point of that? Why would you want to offload your thinking? I use ChatGPT, therefore I am. But it's convenient and engaging and we don't always have time to think and we're tired or feeling lazy, so we use it. And it's being forced on us. Everywhere you look, there are AI ads. I bet YouTube played one before this video. But AI firms are pushing hard for it to be used in education as a tutor. ChatGPT has a study mode and Claude and Gemini both have learning modes, which means it's going to be pushed on young people who are already becoming overly dependent on it and are still developing their critical thinking skills. It could create a whole generation at risk of never fully developing the ability to think. I mean, it's not like ChatGPT needs less competition in the jobs market. So what's to be done? There is a way of protecting yourself against the brain shrinking effects of AI. And that's to remember how learning works. And study after study reveals there's no way around this. Learning requires effort, often painful effort. It's sometimes referred to as desirable difficulty. And it can be summed up in three words. Output, not input. 
Instead of asking AI to summarize something, first attempt to summarize it yourself. Then test yourself on it. Write a short essay. Only then use AI. And if you want to learn and develop your critical thinking skills, critically evaluate whatever the AI spits out at you. And if it suggests you've made an incredible new mathematical or scientific discovery, shut it down and go for a walk. Or even better, read a book.